In this tutorial, we view another example showing how to find the stationary points along a curve's length. Now, the reason why I've chosen this example is because this type of function is quite frequent in exam questions. It's therefore very useful to know how to solve this type of question. So let's get started. We're told to find the coordinates of any stationary points along the curve defined as y equals to x plus 9 over x. Okay, well let me start by moving this question to the side, like so, and now we can get started. To find stationary points, we follow our three-step method. Remember, that was step one. We need to find the derivative function, so find dy dx. Now in this case, our function is y equals to x plus 9 over x. And we can differentiate this function using the power rule. And to do so, it's worth pointing out a couple of important facts. The x that we see here means x to the power of 1. And this 9 over x that we have can be rewritten as 9 times x to the power of negative 1. Consequently, we can rewrite this function as y equals to x to the power of 1 plus 9 times x to the power of negative 1. Now that we've done that, we use the power rule for differentiation to find the derivative function. And that would look like this. dy dx equals to 1 times x to the power of 1 minus 1 plus negative 1 times 9 times x to the power of negative 1 minus 1. That's equal to 1 times x to the power of 0 plus negative 9 times x to the power of negative 2. Do keep in mind that x to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Consequently, this leads to 1 times 1, which is just 1, minus 9 times x to the power of negative 2. And although we could stop here, it's worth pointing out that having this x to the power of negative 2 isn't very practical to work with. So instead of writing 9 times x to the power of negative 2, we're going to write 9 over x to the power of 2. Finally, we write the final answer as dy dx equals to 1 minus 9 over x squared. And that's our first step done. We now have the derivative function. We move on to step 2. And in step 2, we need to solve the equation dy dx equals to 0. Remember, at a stationary point, the gradient of the curve is equal to 0. Consequently, the derivative function must equal to 0 at any stationary point. So solving this equation will lead to the x-coordinates of any stationary points the curve has. Now, using the fact that dy dx equals to 1 minus 9 over x squared, solving dy dx equals to 0 leads to solving 1 minus 9 over x squared equals to 0. And the trick for solving this type of equation is to write all of the terms on the same denominator. We have 9 over x squared, so we need to write 1 as an expression over x squared. And the trick there is to realize that 1 is equal to x squared over x squared. Consequently, we can rewrite this equation as x squared over x squared minus 9 over x squared equals to 0. Since both terms are now written over the same denominator, we can go ahead and state that this equals to x squared minus 9 over x squared equals to 0. Now, the only way that a fraction can equal to 0 is if the numerator is equal to 0. In other words, the expression that we have at the top here. So solving this equation is the same as solving x squared minus 9 equals to 0. That leads to x squared equals to 9, and that has two solutions, x equals to plus or minus 3. In other words, x equals to negative 3, and x equals to 3. And we now have the x-coordinates of two stationary points. And that's the second step done. We move on to the third and final step, and in this step we need to calculate the y-coordinates of the stationary points. Now, looking back at step 2, we found two different x-coordinates. This means there are two stationary points on this curve. We'll therefore have to calculate two different y-coordinates, one for each of the two x-values found in step 2. 
So let's go ahead and start with x equals to negative 3. So when x equals to negative 3, to find the y-coordinate, we go back to the original function. Remember, that was y equals to x plus 9 over x. And we replace every x we see by negative 3. That would be y equals to negative 3 plus 9 over negative 3. That's equal to negative 3 plus 9 divided by negative 3, which is negative 3. That's equal to negative 3 minus 3. Finally, y is equal to negative 6. And so we now know the y-coordinate of the stationary point, which has x-coordinate negative 3. We do the same for the case when x equals to 3. So that would be when x equals to 3. To find the y-coordinate, again, we go back to the original function and we replace every x we see by 3. So that would be y equals to 3 plus 9 over 3. That's equal to 3 plus 3, which equals to 6. And we now have the y-coordinate of the second stationary point. And we're done. We can finally state that this function has two stationary points, and their coordinates are negative 3, negative 6, and 3, 6. To check that these are indeed the two stationary points, we could quickly look at the curve y equals to x plus 9 over x. Let's do that. I'll make a bit of space. And now let's look at the curve. Here it is. So the curve that we see here is the curve y equals to x plus 9 over x. And look at it, we can see that it comes in two separate branches. And the branch on the left hand side seems to be increasing, reaches some maximum point, and then decreases. On the other hand, the branch on the right hand side, going from left to right, is decreasing, reaches some minimum, and then starts going back up again. And if we look carefully, we realize that the left branch has a maximum point here with coordinates negative 3, negative 6, and the right hand branch has a minimum point right here with coordinates 3, 6. And those confirm the results we just found. And that's it for this tutorial.